Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go. This is Valley News Live at 10. We begin with breaking news this evening. A Grand Forks family tells Valley News Live human remains were found on the Spirit Lake Reservation last night. Joseph Bruce has been missing since June of 2018 and was last seen in Devil's Lake. Bruce's van was found in a secluded area on the Spirit Lake Reservation. Now, his family previously told Valley News Live they believed he had been murdered. His wife now tells us a skull was found last night near a slough where Bruce's van was found. She says the remains were taken to UND to be tested. This is a developing story. Stick with Valley News Live for the very latest. Two kids were injured in North Fargo today in a seemingly innocent activity. They were riding in a small trailer attached to their mom's bike, and out of nowhere, they were hit by a car. The kids are expected to be okay, but tonight, police are reminding us to keep a close eye out this summer. Valley News Team's Melanie Palmer explains what you can do to protect your kids in the back of a bike. I was just working and I came out here and I seen uh, ambulance and a couple of cop cars and I didn't really know what was going on. Jesse Mares was busy working outside of this church in North Fargo. And when he saw some cop cars this morning, he didn't think too much of it. That is, until we told him what happened. It was right over here where police say a driver went to make a turn and crashed into one of those bike trailers made for kids with children inside. It shocked me because I have, I have three kids of my own. So it's like, if that were me, ooh, <laughs> I don't know what I'd do. And Mares is no stranger to riding bikes with his kids. In fact, he tells us he's used one of the bike trailers before. But never did he think he would have to worry about something like this. You'd always hope that a car would avoid you, but, you know, some people's driving, and especially people who like text and drive. It's important to just at least stop and wait. And Officer Jessica Schindeldecker with the Fargo Police Department tells us this isn't a problem they often see in town. However, she says you should still be cautious as a driver and bicyclist. Making sure you're wearing a bike helmet and even little ones inside those trailers should have bike helmets on too. And for people like much. Mara's who like getting outside with their kids, they want you to keep this in mind the next time you get behind the wheel. Drive, focus on the road. Driving's dangerous. Mara's ads put any distractions away and out of sight no matter where you're driving. In North Fargo, Melanie Palmer, Valley News Live. The driver told police he didn't see the bicyclist when he was turning and was cited for failure to yield. It's construction season and for most project that means hard work during the day with a break once the sun goes down. However, for construction on 21st Street underpass in Moorhead, that isn't the case. Workers will now be there around the clock. Valley News Team's Katie Opoli joins us live from that project with more. Katie? That's right, Mike. Crews will be working 24 hours, five nights a week for the next three weeks. City engineers say this is a huge project that they hope both improves safety and efficiency as drivers will no longer have to cross over the railroad tracks. With this being a busy area for traffic and a project that's using a lot of manpower, they hope that the extra hours will allow them to complete the construction as soon as possible, with the goal being this year. However, working through the nights also comes with some drawbacks as there are many residents that live in this area. I spoke with some of them earlier today and they say they're excited for the improvements but they just hope they can sleep through the night. The city says they're doing everything they can to reduce the amount of noise so people can still catch some Z's. The night construction only applies to excavation. They won't be doing any other work overnight. Things that the contractor can do are the truck routes, the trucks that are hauling the clay out, they will drive forward, basically. They'll, they'll drive in and avoid having to back up so then they don't make the beeping noise. Also, contractors have swapped out those devices with ones that they hope will be less disruptive. They, I also hope to speak with residents tomorrow to see how the first night of construction went for them. But for now, reporting live in Moorhead, Katie Opperly, Valley News Live. Thanks, Katie. The overnight construction will be going on until the end of the month. Engineers say there's always hope that they'll be able to do overnight work later in September. 
Family members of the man shot yesterday in Becker County say he was a rock for them and will never be forgotten. Today, authorities identified the victim as 27-year-old Jamie Lee Bevins Jr. It happened early yesterday morning at a home of about 20 miles northeast of Detroit Lakes. Valley News Team's Callie Hubbard was in White Earth today and has more from the family. He took my son. He took her dad. Just after 3 a.m. Sunday, Teresa Villabrun was told about a shooting involving her son, Jamie Lee Bevins Jr. My daughter called me back a little while later and she told me he was shot. <laughs> and they couldn't find him. It's news that no mother ever wants to hear. Jamie, or Hunker as they called him, was shot and killed Sunday morning. The family gathered around a bonfire a day later to remember their son. He's, he's a rock star, you know. My, my son's awesome. He was a, a giving person. He was always happy. I mean, he had some bad days once in a while, but he'd be smiling through everything anyways. Jamie had a nine-year-old daughter. That's my dad and that's me. He was fun. He did everything he could with me. I don't know. I loved him so much. Shaylin says he always had a good joke to tell. He said knock knock. I said who's there. He said the interrupting cow and then I said the interrupting cow who. And then he said moo. <laughs> Jamie's father says whether the sun was out or if there was a blizzard, he had everyone's back. He's always stuck up for us in school. You know, the whole community loves him. The family tells me that Jamie would have done anything for anyone that showed up at the house today. They also tell me that they will be holding a wake for him, but they don't know when. In White Earth, Minnesota, Callie Hubbard, Valley News Live. Although authorities are not identifying the man suspected in the shooting, family members say they know who he is and they want justice for Jamie's death. If you have any information, call Becker County deputies at this phone number, 218-847-2661. Bond is set at $2 million for the two men accused of murdering a local food truck owner late last week. 19-year-old Kareem Bird Jr. and 30-year-old Charles Harris III are both charged with conspiracy to commit murder and another intentional murder. Police say they shot Jason Halverson multiple times Friday in downtown Fargo. Halverson's autopsy showed he suffered gunshot wounds from both 9mm and 22 caliber bullets, which are the same guns found inside a vehicle with the suspects. Bird told investigators he and Harris argued with Halverson, left and returned with firearms to confront the food truck owner. Bird says they both fired multiple rounds at the victim before fleeing the area. However, Harris denies any involvement in the killing. Two people are recovering from injuries after being thrown from a motorcycle near Thomastown Township. It happened Friday night. Investigators responded to the crash on Wadena County Road 30. They found that 57-year-old Dennis Trena hit a deer, overturned, and came to arrest in the west ditch of the county road. Both Dennis and his passenger were thrown from the motorcycle. They were taken to a local hospital for injuries that are not life-threatening. No one was wearing a helmet. Despite the announced agreement between Mexico and the United States, there's talk tonight that it doesn't offer any guarantees. President Trump has indicated he'd put the tariffs back in place if Mexico is not successful in stopping people from crossing the border. These tariffs would have started at 5% and grown over time until the White House said it would be satisfied that the objectives were met. North Dakota growers and businesses say they're affected by the threat of tariffs. The beer industry specifically is taking a hit versus sodas and, and waters and, and liquor. So it, it makes us uh, more price sensitive and price alert um, because we want to make sure that the end consumer isn't affected by all of this. Following the announced deal, the president tweeted the tariffs have been suspended indefinitely. However, other international markets continue to be threatened with North Dakota farmers remaining in the crossfire. We spoke with the state's ag commissioner about this. He says we are often in the middle because of the diversity the crops North Dakota offers. 
Some Democratic leaders have accused the president of resolving a crisis that he manufactured in order to draw attention away from the Mueller investigation. Republicans, on the other hand, are applauding the news of the agreement. However, Senator John Hoven said in part today, now our nations need to continue working together, passing the USMCA in both countries to provide economic certainty for our U.S. farmers and manufacturers. Certain families could be hearing from debt collectors now that Fargo School student lunch debt grew to around $26,000 this year. The district says financial donations will be used to cover as much of the lunch debt as possible. The district also plans to work with families to help them cover what they owe. But after that, the debt from past due accounts will be turned over to collection agencies. The announcement comes as the federal government has asked the district to raise the cost of school meals. The